and you're talking about the album era, but you're not creating full albums that are worthy of somebody that, that wants to listen and purchase them, essentially. Well, Jay, you just alluded to an amount of record sales and what used to be or what would have been listed as successful or not. You alluded to that. And Jermaine Dupree, he had a very interesting take on the state of hip hop as it relates to uh, it kind of tied it into Sexy Red's album sales. Mm. And he kind of talked about what you said about how it used to be versus what it is now. So right. listen to this clip, Lone. I think it starts at 36 seconds was my mark. People got to stop lying. I think that's, that's, that's the beginning of the end. Too, many, too much lies? It's too much lying. And I'm not talking about just like people. I'm talking about the industry, right? Because the industry still tries to make you believe that if you... You know, if you a hot artist and you got a single, that selling albums don't matter, right? And I and I'm I'm, I'm only selling like albums don't matter. Yeah, I'm only bringing this up because I seen like academics posted today something about Sexy Red album only doing 28,000 copies. In the era that I came in the music industry, if you sold 28,000 copies, you didn't get no other chance to even walk in the building again. You're fired. Like. Is not talking to you if you sold 28,000 records, right? And I just feel like, I feel like it's a, it's such a disconnect between people understanding the streaming situation and then actually what you're looking at, right? Because if, if, if we should be only paying attention to the streaming numbers, this then I don't quality of this why is the blogs always try to post what people are selling as. This man's talking about blogs. Out, because for people that look at music the way I look at it, it feels like a failure. It still what did they feels record like on? He was having a song. conversation with uh, Steve Stout, by the way. This is some oh, form so or something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's not the crispiest audio. But yeah, but it's like cutting in and out, too. That's yeah, weird. Right, because I come from an era where the numbers were 80,000. What's he getting at? The part where he talked about um, the emphasis on sales... Like the, the illusion of people are popping because they, um, sexy red is all over the place. But in all actuality, she sold, well, what did he say, 28, 28K, I believe, and how, how low those numbers actually are in real life. And the fact that people just think that she's all over the place and a superstar. She is. Well, she is, See, but I, it's not I, translating I, I, to. I don't think that's what he's saying. You don't think he's going that route? I think what he's saying is like, we're reporting these um, numbers like they actually mean anything. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. It's not like anybody went to the store and bought Sexy Red's album. It's all on streaming. True. And that's, once again, we talk about a passive way to be a consumer. Like, it doesn't, I don't want to say that when you see somebody's, I don't even know why they call it sound scan anymore because nobody's scanning anything. Um, Ooh. What does it bar. actually matter what somebody's streaming? You, I, I, I'm more apt to say, look, what, are, what is it when you talk about the popping artists, if you will? Mm -hmm. I want to know what their BDS is. What it, and that's how you determine how song, many time many song, times that songs being played on the radio. Um, I want to know what their poll star numbers are as far as like okay, what are they getting per show? Because oh, okay. that is really the determination of what an artist is. Like you can say, oh, sexy red flop. She only sold twenty eight. Huh? Entertainer. 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 You know, she only sold twenty eight thousand. <laughs> yeah. And so that's a reason for people to, to look down on sexy red. And she's not really popping. That's not true because sure like and, and to put it in. Whoa, whoa, wait, but, what? but to put it in the context, Usher did the Super Bowl. His album came out that day and he only sold ninety thousand. No, it wasn't that day, but it was a good album. But but it but still, you just did the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. the biggest entertainment product on the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. You had 13 minutes all to yourself. And. When your album comes out, you can't even get people. It's only 90,000 people equivalent who are even curious enough to click on the new Usher album. So when you put it in that context, Sexy Red doing 28,000 when Usher did 90,000 after the Super Bowl, album mm. be good or not. You know, that's where you got to look at things and how and determine whether or not someone you, looking at sound. Like I said, what is the point of sound scan at this point? Because right. nobody's selling anything. Well, the illusion, again, and we have to keep bringing this up, is social media. Uh, these people are in your face every day. Um, she has singles with Drake. Drake is arguably the biggest hip-hop star when it comes to making money as far as being internationally known and, and tour money, things of that nature, uh, features. Um, but, again, to what Jermaine Dupri is saying, is 28000 is laughable. 
Yeah, you in know his what I'm because her 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 bottom line and all these other areas have to add up too. Just you being in my face does not mean you're getting paid. Oh, essentially, because that's that's what's going on. People think that just because I see this person all the time, they're making a whole bunch of money. Bar and you can't tell them nothing. Oh, they're getting a the bag because I see them all the time. No, they just got somebody who knows how to make this content for them all the time, who they're in turn paying. So they're not getting these bags that you think they're getting. They're getting free clothes and free shoes and gear and stuff to make them look the part. But at the end of the day, they're not really grossing all this money that you think they are. And I believe what he's saying is these artists are being happy with just doing that because somebody is talking about them. He he spoke about academics. Posted, uh, she sold twenty eight thousand. Mm-hmm. That ain't nothing to be happy about mm-hmm. from his time. It's right. like you you don't want nobody to know you only sold twenty eight thousand. Right, right. But now, again, social media. He's speaking on it. So then, in turn, it looks like this person is doing something. But you know, but but you said, once again, Good you point know, it goes him. back to the whole thing about famous versus being rich but at the same time i just feel like at this point what is the difference who cares what you sold first the only person where i care what they sold first week or i can even make it make sense based on you know all the things i've learned being in radio records is taylor swift because she actually sells something yeah she, people actually go out and physically buy her records and she's the only one in the industry even drake as big as he is nobody buys drake records you know, the, he doesn't have this presence where you can go to Costco and buy his vinyl in four different versions. And, you know, his fans are going to buy all four, right. you know, so. But they'll pay, they'll pay to go see they'll him. They'll pay live. to go see him. They will go see him live. on the radio. So once again, I think when you're looking at the majority of artists who really have nothing to sell, some most of these artists do not put out a vinyl piece or mm-hmm. maybe a commemorative CD or, or tape like Killer Mike did. Mm-hmm. When you see their, you know. 50,000, 20,000 equivalent records streamed, that doesn't mean anything. Mm. It used to be sound scan, what you did first week, that meant everything. I don't think it means anything now. I mean, the line that stuck out to me was, it's kind of like what Terry said. He says, the industry still tries to make you believe that if you're a hot artist and you got a single, that selling albums don't matter. And he talked about academics posting and saying, oh, 28,000, 28,000. Because was he doing it to clown her? Right. Or was he doing it? I, think, it I just, think he's doing it to reference just where we are in the music industry, period. That part. Because yeah. like you can say, like you can say, this, oh, it's, it's almost old man yelling at cloud when you say, man, back in my day, $28,000 would have dried think, up your opportunities. But it's I think just not Terry, how it works now. I think Terry's point, I think Terry hit the nail on the hand because it's just an assessment. He's talking about the comparison. I don't know if it's the, necessarily the... A little bit of it is the old man get off my yard. Or but I think he, he's, he's just really giving you a fair assessment yeah. of what it is today. But he's also he also alluded to essentially dropping an album mm-hmm. being a quality project. People aren't paying attention to that. All they want is a couple songs that are going to get hot and can lead them to uh, being an opening act for somebody or or even go on tour and just play whatever songs they're going to play off their album, but people get hype off of three of them. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I, I kind of agree with him. I kind of want to hear more of the conversation to see where he's going. I get where he's, once again, old man yelling at cloud. Like we're talking about, oh, we need to save the soul of hip hop. Stop that. Is that a bad thing? To say? Is that a bad thing to say? I think it's, a, it's, it's when all you pay attention to is what's in the club or on the radio, then maybe you, or what you see put in your face 10 times a day, Maybe you do think if you if you if you think hip hop is encompassed by sexy red, which I know she's, uh, you know, a lightning rod for a lot of people who think who talk about the decline of hip hop. And, and it's fair, but not fair. Um, but when you know better, like I feel like we do, like, you know, just the fact that we sat and watched, uh, you know, and we do the reactions to, to hip hop videos. Mm-hmm. You know, there are so many people out here creating incredible, diverse art. True. You know, so when you say we need to save hip hop, no, we don't need to save hip hop. We just need to pay attention to more than what's shoved in our faces all the time. Yeah, I agree. I'm not mad at that. I mean, that's that's really the I, I, yeah, I don't. And they've been having the save hip hop conversation ever since, you know, like that's, save mainstream hip hop. That summer. That what? That's it. That loan just that's, loan just that summer it. ninety. What was it? Ninety seven when Bad Boy took everything over. Yeah. And then everybody's like, oh, hip hop. It, it's always something like that. Whenever something gets popular and it doesn't 
make the person who fell in love with hip hop five or 10 years ago feel comfortable, then it's always like, we got to save the soul of hip hop. It doesn't so, sound like this. And uh, we need to go back to this. So instead no, of just, just pay attention to, to more than what you are force fed on the radio. So instead of caring so much, because we have this we had this conversation, you know, there are people that will say, you know, like you're talking about, we got to save the culture, the culture, whatever that is. We've even talked about what that means. So what you're saying is instead of worrying about all of that, focus on, and I'm paraphrasing from what, what I'm hearing you say, focus on what you find and what you like and pay give that more attention. Yeah. Stop instead of stop complaining about how, uh, you know, Outcast is not getting back together and 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 mm -hmm. like, I, you know, I wish Public Enemy would do and Public Enemies puts out music, but you just don't think so because you're too lazy to go check for it. Like, stop having those old man, even though we're the new old heads, you know, stop having those old man conversations about hip hop and what it used to be when you were comfortable and you were young and you were still cool. Like there's music that's made still for you. Like the fact that we can still get a Lupe Fiasco True. Uh, uh, project and get excited. The fact that like I can see that Pete Rock and Common are, you know, they're really setting this up for to be something special. True. Or you Chance know. and Primo or, or any yeah. of these young We just people. saw an example We're of just, Chance and Primo. So when, stop, stop. It's like stop talking about the people you don't like so much. It's it's an, it's as as old as time yeah you know yeah. like it, it was literally the mantra of bringing down the band we shared stuff we liked we didn't talk about stuff we didn't we didn't just like. amplify the stuff we like yeah. that's all that you need to do yeah. push the stuff that you like to the front and we just need more people that do that that actually do that um and this is something that we've seen you know across the board and you know a lot of these even back in the blog era the models shifted throughout time to where like it used to be that from mm -hmm. all the early hip-hop blogs and then they just started shifting to kind of sharing everything, just anything that was in the realm of hip hop because they didn't want to exclude certain people. And then it just kind of, it, it fizzled out, you know, and then Be it's the same, it's the same thing with streaming or the, the playlisting and stuff like that. You know, it's like, nope. There used to be, there used to be city, city specific blogs where it's just that music or a certain type of music. Like you said, kind of would bring on the band. You could tell somebody was sharing just what they liked or maybe they wanted to highlight local artists. That, now, that wasn't, I don't know, that was just sharing us. everything. Uh -huh. yeah, they were just sharing whatever was out. Yeah, no, no, we weren't sharing local stuff. I, I'm just saying, like, we were sharing the stuff that was good. Fake Shore Drive is an example of somebody who shared everything. From a lot of Chicago yeah, stuff. Like, yeah. We didn't do Chicago. that. We just shared. Maybe know. I'm getting I'm getting that part confused. No, I know shared, it, they were very Chicago heavy. Yeah. No. Very Chicago. No, it's we, called Fake Shore Drive. Yeah. So I, but I mean, like, no, we shared only good hip hop stuff that we like based upon mm -hmm. our tastes. And if you didn't agree with that, that's cool. You can go to these other places and listen True. to it. True. But I feel like that's, that is something that is missing right now. We don't have a lot of that. We don't have a lot of people that are curating things in that manner because these, I, I talked about it a little bit in the past, but we don't, it's not set up. These platforms that we exist on are not set up in ways to where we can benefit at all as curators when we are sharing these things. Mm -hmm. It's like, we cool, we can do reaction videos. We don't get anything from these reaction videos because we can't monetize them. Right. Right. You know what I mean? There's no, there's no benefit in built for that. And so people are playing into what works for them. Well, and, it, and so people aren't doing it. It's just literally what it is. There's no benefit in doing that unless you have your own website and nobody yeah. goes to websites anymore. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That's why blogging died off. So it's like the way you could get around it before was you, People could come to your website and you could make money off ads on your website. Mm -hmm. People don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. It's all on platforms. And so if you want to be a curator on a YouTube or on a TikTok or all this other stuff, like there are subtle and trick, you know, ways to do it, but they don't make it easy anymore. Nah. Jump in there, Terry. Um, <coughs> what fails happen too are these OGs like Jermaine Dupree or even like a Dre, or just to name a few, aren't getting behind artists and creating the same these albums so if, if you're speaking about albums the people in your camp that you're helping that are already superstars their albums should reflect that and he helped usher on his last album and the album just really ain't that good to me i don't know if y'all listened to it no. i didn't run it it's, I'm it's not, gonna it's, it's not it has good a, it has a couple cuts but it you has know, a like, couple cuts but it's not an album and that's the problem is is, compared to confessions no it's not now well, but you know you can't really compare a whole lot to confessions compare, though. but as the thing is, like, there were records on there that I've, I've been listening to for two years. You know, like, as far as, like, okay, 
I understand the rollout with the Super Bowl and everything, but it was just like, eh. Yeah. And I, you know, it was just. I love the record ruin, the one that they led with a single, but, yeah. uh, you know, it just. It just didn't work. Yeah, it's just a few singles here and there. And it's like they're following the same pattern that you're pretty much talking down to a lot of these other artists. You're doing that. You're 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 creating these singles and you're talking about the album era, but you're not creating full albums that are worthy of somebody that, that wants to listen and purchase it, essentially. I can do that. Yeah, I don't know what else to say to that. So All right. Well, Number numbers don't matter. Yeah, except for they kind of do. Yeah, they, they kind of do. Twenty eight thousand ain't shit. <laughs> <laughs> but then, yeah. but then, when you go back and look at anything else, it's not Taylor Swift. It's pretty comparable. What's going on out here? Yeah, it's it's normal. That's yeah, what, that's what I mean. I, like it's like you for know. today. Yeah, yeah. Just make sure that uh, your paperwork is right on the other ends of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it ain't gonna be that album. 